When you were seven, do you remember when your parents would give you stickers for accomplishing your goals? Or when they'd offer to take you to your favorite restaurant when you brought home a good report card? Maybe you don't get excited about stickers anymore, but that doesn't mean the pattern of rewarding certain behavior needs to stop once we reach adulthood. In fact, it's likely you are being rewarded in some way with financial returns. If you're employed, it's likely that the harder you work, the more you'll get paid, either now or in the future. Whether or not you realize it, you're motivated by rewards in adulthood in the same way you were by that unicorn sticker you got when you stopped picking your nose in primary school. Implementing a similar reward system now can actually help you achieve your goals faster and with less resistance. The science behind this isn't as simple as it seems because there are multiple psychological, emotional, and behavioral systems at play when it comes to describing motivation and goal achievement. But the simplest way to understand why rewards help you achieve your goals is through a three-point feedback system. Rewards, performance, motivation. Too often this feedback loop looks more like a straight line and especially for particularly challenging or ambitious projects like growing on YouTube or building a business, the reward can feel far away and we might even lose sight of how valuable the reward is to us. Developing a reward list helps us close or tighten that feedback loop. If you don't already have a list of goals you'd like to achieve, this is where you should start. They can be big or small, but you will eventually have to break them down. The SMART technique for goal development can be helpful here. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. For example, let's say you one day want to own your own business. That can take years, but a smaller goal could be publishing new content every day, growing your Twitter following or building your product, whatever it is. I wanna build up my personal brand, which isn't very specific or measurable, but I can use the SMART goal technique to develop the goal of hitting 2000 followers on Twitter by the end of the year and break that into even smaller goals by committing to publishing an interesting or useful tweet twice a day. It's okay if some goals are smarter than others. Not every goal can be easily broken down into chunks. Once you have that list of goals, a sign of value to achieving each one. For example, hitting 2000 Twitter followers is worth a hundred pounds to me, but putting up 50 YouTube videos this year something that takes substantial time, effort, and with full transparency, a lot of confidence, <laughs> is worth about 500 pounds. And I know that not everyone will have the financial freedom for these kinds of things, but you can reward yourself in other ways. I also have a reward list for things like hitting milestones in my savings account, launching my first business, getting my next paid acting gig, and making my short film, all kinds of things. And when I achieve those, I'll buy myself something worth the amount I've put aside for it. Now, some people find it useful to tie a specific item or experience to that goal, like a trip or a manicure, but I find that a monetary value gives me flexibility. The important thing here is that you have something to look forward to. So you really do have to reward yourself. When I get close to achieving the goal, I put money into a different bank account so that I'm prepared. And I usually have an idea of what I'm going to get or do with that money. Here's an important point. The reward has to be worth it or you won't be motivated. I'm personally not easily motivated by food. So the thought of eating an entire cake really does nothing for me. However, rewarding myself with a guilt-free day where I do nothing but sit in front of the TV and watch shark attack movies or anything with Courtney Cox in it, that's the dream for me. In psychology, this is explained through something called expectancy theory. Our behavior toward a goal is driven by our view that if we work hard, we'll hit our targets. If we achieve our targets, we'll get rewards and those rewards will be worth it. Of course, people are motivated by different things. So while you might think that praise from your boss or personal satisfaction are good enough rewards, science tells us that's actually not true. And in fact, it can be difficult to internalize those types of intangible rewards. Here's a personal example. When I finished my PhD, I told myself I would celebrate. When the time came, I didn't have a plan or anything on my goal list. And I didn't feel how I thought I would feel. So I did nothing. And looking back, I wish I'd given it a monetary value so I could take my friends out for dinner or go to a spa and really feel rewarded for my efforts in a way that was special to me. What I've described so far are relatively big goals with substantial rewards, but you can incorporate this in your day to day. For example, if you're struggling to focus during the day, rewarding yourself after 25 minutes of work with a 10 minute break also fills in that feedback loop. It's easier to work when you're expecting a break and when you trust yourself, which means you have to actually let yourself have that break. Remember that small wins lead to big wins. And if we go back to that feedback loop, performance and motivation require constant attention. You need to keep that loop going. And as you do, you gain momentum and the motivation and feedback loop starts working for you. If you like the idea of creating a goal list, but you're not quite sure what to spend your time on, I have another video about what to do if you don't know your passion in life and why that's perfectly fine. 
leave a comment with some ideas for rewards because it can actually be harder than you think to think of new ones. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.